good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. We want to thank the staff pastor parish for a wonderful reception we had between services to say goodbye to Bruce. We're glad to have his family with us worshiping today. And um, we wish him all the very best as he moves on to Florida eventually and, and to new life in a new way. Um, so we really thank Thank everyone for participating in that. Thursdays, there's a mission meeting. Um, and don't forget, today at uh, 5 to 7, we'll have our uh, cocoa stop. So if you're out trick-or-treating, swing by here and get warmed up and pick up your treats and treasure um, for that. That'll be a fun afternoon and evening here. We thank everyone who donated treats for that activity tonight and the Evangelism Committee and Stacy for putting that all together. All right, I think that's all the announcements I have right now. Let's say happy birthday to everybody having birthdays this week. Happy birthday. Michael Horton's having a birthday. Happy birthday. And everybody else who's on that list. And happy anniversary to the Hoffmans. Their anniversary is coming up this week, too. So happy anniversary to them. God is good, friends. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Let's continue our worship and praise. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say
Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful October morning that we gather in worship and praise of you and your glory. We thank you for your love for each of us, and we do ask that you just accept our worship this day. We just pray that you will accept each of us as we come to you, that you will cleanse whatever may be holding us back and remove any sin that causes us to stumble so that we can rise and live in your love and also so that we can share your love with others. We thank you for that great love that we do know best through Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, we'll invite Stacy forward. It's her time and all the children and youth are welcome to come down who'd like to come. Good it's morning. Your time to you. Look at all the children. We've got what a, a blessing. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are going to start with calendar time. And you might have calendar time at school, especially if you're in pre-K, kindergarten, maybe even first grade. So calendar time kind of goes like this. Today is Sunday. The date is October 31st. The weather is going to be, temperature is going to be 54 degrees with partly cloudy skies and winds from the northwest between 10 to 20 miles an hour and the season is fall. Ooh, there are four seasons all together. What are they? Right, Coop? Winter, spring, summer, fall. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. You are absolutely correct. So in winter, and you'll see the picture on the screen, but you can also look at my picture, whichever is easier for you to see. In winter, the weather is cold and snowy. And it's... Good to make a snow angel, drink hot chocolate, wear your winter coat, mittens, and we celebrate Christmas. Then we have spring. And in spring, we think of new life and digging in the dirt and planting things butterflies, lots of baby animals, light pastel colors, and Easter. Then we get to, what comes next? Summer. So then we think of this. The weather is hot and sunny, and we have fun going to the beach and swimming. We might have a barbecue and a picnic, and we might see fireworks on July 4th. Then we come to where we are now. All right, Braden, turn around and look at me, please, and you'll be able to see a lot more. Thanks for helping me. All right, fall. In fall, the air is crisp and cool. We think football. We think pumpkin spice, absolutely everything. <laughs> we celebrate Halloween today and Thanksgiving. Okay, what's your favorite season? Which one do you like the best? Okay, Mary, which one do you like the best? Winter. Why do you like winter? You can build, uh, make a snow angel and a snowman. All right, Coop, which one do you like the best? You like winter too. Okay. Why do you like winter the best? Okay, snowballs and your birthday. All right, Seth, which one do you like? You like summer. Okay, why do you like summer better? Go to the beach and pool. Okay, anyone, which one do you like? Summer. Okay, why do you like summer the best? Go to the beach. All right. 
you're sitting next to Cooper, and his birthday's in December, too. All right, Cooper, what day is your birthday on? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Twinkies! How did that happen? God is really good, isn't it? <laughs> that, that's kind of scary, isn't it? God works in wonderful <laughs> ways. Who would know? All right, so <clears throat> there are seasons, like those kinds of seasons, and then there are seasons in our life. And sometimes we might be happy and we're going to dance and we're going to be loved and we're going to love other people. And sometimes the season might be that we're sad and we cry we might grieve because someone that we love has recently passed away. We might have to fix something. We might have to fix something. Now, right now you might be in a really good season. You're doing well. Your family's all together. Everything is awesome. You're at school. You're working really hard. And you're getting good grades and good reports. And maybe you had breakfast this morning, and for breakfast it was a big cinnamon roll. Well, it doesn't get much better than that, right? But maybe your season this morning is kind of sad. Maybe you're fighting with your brothers and sisters. You're working really hard on your grades. Oh, but that's not going so well. Hmm. Huh. So there are going to be changes in your seasons. You are going to change. How are you going to change? What's going to continue to happen for you? What's going to happen? You're going to listen better? Well, that would be a great change, wouldn't it? That would be, that would be a happy season. But you're going to grow, right? So you're going to change. So your family is going to change. Your parents are going to change. They might not tell you that you can do something now, but maybe next year you'll be able to. So your friends might change. That happens sometimes. You get new friends. Your school may change. Even you may, your church may change. But you know what is super wonderful? God does not change. If you have a relationship with him, it's always the same. And when you're having one of those dark seasons, God can change that into something beautiful in his time. So we can take that sadness and, make, and find a way to make it a joy. Let's read our Bible verse together. Jesus is the same Yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Let's say a prayer. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for giving us the seasons. Thank you for giving us the seasons. Of winter, spring. Of winter, spring. Summer and fall. Summer and fall. Thank you for the seasons of our lives. Thank you for the seasons of our lives. And turning our sad seasons. And turning our sad seasons. Into something beautiful for you. Into something beautiful for you. Thank you for. Thank you for. Always being the same. Always being the same. And always loving us. And always loving us. And all God's people said. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, Miss Kaylin's group is ready to go. So if you go with Miss Kaylin, this is your time to go. Otherwise, you can go back to your seat. And Miss Kaylin's group is toddlers through pre K. So anybody who can walk, who's through, but hasn't started school or hasn't started kindergarten, can go with Miss Kayla. So if you'd like to go, you can come with Miss Kayla. And moms are welcome too, if that would be helpful. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm renaming you. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylin. <laughs> Looks like she's got a nice group today. <laughs> That'll be fun.
<laughs> Let's join together in our next praise song. together. Lord, we are very thankful for the opportunity to give as we have received. We are especially thankful for Jesus, the greatest gift given. As we ask uh, that you accept these tithes and offerings that have been given to the work of your kingdom, multiply them, and bless us, O oh Lord, that we continue to witness and shine the light of Jesus out into this hurting world. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Well, we are talking about time today, and our scripture lesson is coming from the passage, a very famous passage on time in the Old Testament from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're going to do verses 1 through 4, so let's share God's word for us together. For everything there is a season and a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our great God. Amen. Well, time. For some of us, time goes quickly. We never have enough of it. We can't figure out how we got everything done. I've known people who early retire who say, who early in their retirement say, oh, I don't know how I worked. I'm so busy now. Right? I hope that's your issue, Bruce, that you're not bored. But then other times in our lives, five minutes can seem like five hours, right? Like if we're waiting for an appointment or waiting to hear news, good, whatever, it can seem like time just stretches on and on and on. It all depends on our situation. One study said that an average American will spend a year of our life looking for things. Does that happen in your household? I think we'll spend more than a year in my household looking for things. And it says you can spend two years reading and sending email or texting. That's a lot of time just doing that, isn't it? Two years and five years waiting in line. Ish. We just went to the Biltmore in, in um, Asheville, uh, North Carolina, and we waited in line. <laughs> I can see why well, you might spend a lot of time. Not that you want to do that. Benjamin Franklin cautioned, he said, do you love life? Then do not squander time, for it's the stuff that life is made of. And John Wesley said that too, that we should be people who are conscious of our time and how we're spending it. We shouldn't just waste time. And so when you consider that we have time and in our ability to use time, how are you using your time? How are you using your time? Are you using your time like Ecclesiastes says? Do you remember that there is a season for everything in your life? Or is time a burden to you? Is time something you're trying to control and, and trying to put in a box? Because it doesn't fit that well, does it? Seasons change and, and things change in our lives. And so as seasons have a start and a finish that sometimes overlap, and we, if we understand time as the Ecclesiastes writer did, that there is a season for everything, that can help us if we're in a, in a time that's not easy for us. We can remember that this too shall pass. Or if we're in a time of great blessing, we need to remind ourselves this too shall pass and that time changes. Well, our colors around us are changing and they look beautiful right now. And many consider fall, although not the children, not one child said they thought fall was the best time of year. And yet I know people who started putting out their fall decorations in August. Now, I'm not judging if that was you. I was glad to see them. They're cute. They're, we love fall decorations. They're adorable. But we, can, we know that um, fall can be a beautiful time of year. Have you ever driven through uh, falling leaves like this and saw them just blowing around your car? It can be really beautiful. Or if you're out for a walk, you can just hear them crunching underneath your feet. And that certain smell that fall has, you know, it's a unique smell of cleanness and freshness or, or just that unique, beautiful smell season of change. But fall can be difficult for some people. You know, fall can be difficult to watch things come to an end. Summer has come to an end, and, and now we're, harvest is about come to an end, and, and we're getting ready for winter. And that can be hard for some of us. And it's hard to look at the next season as a time of rest and preparation for spring. And so if we don't live in the truth that there's a season for everything, we may look at this upcoming time and get overwhelmed with depression and, and sadness and miss the reward and rest that winter and fall can offer us. 
We didn't share this part of the chapter together, but this is a culmination of what the wisdom writer thought about time in Ecclesiastes. God has made everything beautiful in its time. Or another uh, translation says, God makes everything appropriate in its time. So if you have things going on in your life that you're wondering, why is this going on? What is the time about this? You must remember, God controls time. God is sovereign. And maybe things are not just in their time yet for them to be appropriate or to be beautiful in your life. And certainly, death is not a beautiful thing in most circumstances, although sometimes for some it is a relief if they're suffering or they've lived a long time and they're lonely, but that might not be easy for us. But if we understand the time that they're going into, which is eternal time, then we can trust that God is going to work out that grief in our own lives and, and be, help us to be thankful for having that person in our lives. And we can rest in the truth that God is going to make sure our time works out for our good. And that can take the pressure off of us and some of the disappointment, too, when things don't happen exactly the way we expect. Now, that means we can take that deep breath, but it doesn't mean we can stop. We need to keep praying and keep working towards things that we believe are good and need to come about in our time. But it means we don't have to be so anxious and worried over time. Whatever season we find ourselves in, we can trust that God is over that time. And God is caring for us in that time. And how are we going to use that time? How are we going to keep doing the work that God has given us to do? Well, our time right now, we're saying goodbye to Bruce. And we want to say thank you to Bruce. Um, we're in a season of change in our music program. And for a pastor and, and talking to the band, I, I, we're all a little anxious about this time we're going to be entering into. And we appreciate that Bruce has been with us since... 2014. Yeah, he started in January. I know. Thank you, Bruce. And during his time here, Bruce has led numerous worship services. I mean, you can do the math between 2014 and now. I didn't do it, but you can do it. He's done how many choir anthems and cantatas, special music. But then in 2019, he started helping with the praise band, which is this service. And so he's been doing that since 2019. So now Bruce is entering a new season in his life. And we wish him all the best. Thank you, Bruce, for sharing your time and talent with us. We really appreciate it. And we wish you very well. As we, Some of us are jealous that you're moving into retirement, i.e. Pastor Mary. <laughs> but it's also, what other time is today? Halloween! Today is Halloween. Look at all those beautiful pumpkins. I didn't create any of those, unfortunately. It's a time for fun. I think Halloween can be a fun time. I asked one little boy at first service, I said, what about tricks? And he said, yes, it's a time for tricks. <laughs> I think he always thinks it's a time for tricks. <laughs> but maybe you carved some pumpkins too. And, and uh, here's a few. I thought during our time together we should have a few Halloween jokes. And there are people after service that had some more. But here's some of my Halloween jokes I thought were cute. Why did the, what did the skeleton bring to the potluck? Spare ribs. <laughs> I love groaners, so watch out. What is the mummies? This, since we're celebrating Bruce's music ministry, and this is the fifth Sunday, we often do music ministry on fifth Sundays. What is the uh, mummy's favorite kind of music? Rap. Rap. I know, it's a real groaner. Okay, here's one. Why do ghosts ride in elevators? Because it raises their spirits. <laughs> okay, enough bad ones, although I have one more that I can't resist. So what plant, what plant loves Halloween? Bamboo. <laughs> That's it. Okay, no more bad jokes. Although I wish I could remember the one Carol told me. It was funny too. 
All right. Well, you can have some more fun. Stop by here at the church at 5 o'clock for some cocoa, and that'll be fun and warm up and use the restrooms or whatever you need and get some treats and a treasure and, and share Jesus. That's a good way to use your time. Because of all the things we do with our time, planting and harvesting, breaking down, building up, packing, unpacking, laughing, weeping, all those different things that we do with our time, it's the best thing we can do with any of our time is focus on God. And we do that how? Through prayer, through coming together as the church and talking about God and talking about God's word and reading God's word. There's lots of different ways that we experience God. And when we do experience God, we bring God into our finite time. But more than that, God brings us out of our finite time into the infinite And that's God's message for us, that we should be about thinking and implying and experiencing God here and now. And that helps us as we go into different seasons of our lives to know that this is one reality, but there is a greater reality, a different reality that God is also a part of. There's more than what we can see and live in right here and now. This is just part of the journey, but it is only a part. And that's a wonderful thing about time. Doctor Who is a popular uh, show about time travelers. Maybe you've watched it. Nobody watches Doctor Who but me, but I like Doctor Who. But those are kind of fantasy shows that take us out of our ordinary time into the realm of the beyond. And that can be fun. And they remind us like that there is more to life than what we might see right now. And that is so true in our relationship with God. And it's so true about time. You know, time right now, right here, we're in this one time. We're in central daylight time right now. But next Sunday, we won't even be in that time. Next Sunday, right, a, a week from today, right now, we'll be in Central Standard Time. So turn your clock back an hour. And for some of us, that's a great Sunday. You get an extra hour of rest. It looks like some of you out there might need it. <laughs> Pastor Mary needs it. <laughs> so I like that Sunday. It's one of my favorite Sundays of the year. It's also going to be All Saints Celebration. So that's kind of both good and sad. But sometimes it's also a hard Sunday for some people. It shows that that time change, whether we do it in the spring and and do it in the fall, when we do it, we lose productivity. You think we gain it, but we don't. It's hard for us to adjust to that time. And while we were traveling, we got into Eastern time, and I had to call back to the office, and I got mixed up on what time it was. I thought it was 10 10, 10 o'clock here, but it was only 9 o'clock when we first started the office. So it's Time can be disorienting. And, you know, right now, people watching online, they might be live streaming it right now in the Central Standard Time. But, you know, there might be people live streaming it in China. That's a totally different time than it is to now. But God's not limited to this time and place. God is bigger than our time and place. And so whatever time it is, always this is the truth about time. Today is our day of salvation. God can be with us here and now and out there and wherever we might be experiencing worship. That's the marvelous gift of God's time. The Apostle Paul writes this about what we should be doing with our time. He says, as God's partners, we beg you to accept this marvelous gift of salvation at, and, um, and God's kindness and not ignore it. How many of us accept God's salvation and then we just kind of take it for granted? Oh, well, we're saved, so that's good enough. No, we need to live into it. Because if we don't live into it, then we start living out of it. And when we start living out of it, we miss God's gift. He says, at the right time, God heard us. On the day of salvation, God saved us. But now is the right time. Today is the day of salvation. When is the kingdom of God at hand? Right now. When is God with us? Right now. God is present with us no matter what the circumstances might be saying. We find ourselves in trouble. God is with us. We find ourselves in joy. God is with us. Good, bad, ordinary. God is with us. God is available and at hand. But what about us? 
Are we with God? Are we looking for God? The right time is now to live with God. It always is now. God's time is always present. We may live in the past. We may look for the future. But God's time is now, the only real time we have. How are you using your now? If you use your time with God, that changes time completely. When you use your time with God, it changes everything for good. It makes everything appropriate and beautiful in its time. Let's pray together. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, help us to use our time in your presence and in your love. We pray for your blessing today as we go about our different activities, that we will do so in fun and safety. But we also pray that we will use our time to share the good news of Jesus with others, especially those who aren't living in wise uses of their time. O oh Lord, speak to us afresh and anew of your love for us in Jesus. Bring us a new way of existing and being and speaking so that we can be a light and a blessing to others. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, the one who gave his all for us and the one who created time. We praise you and come to you in his precious name. Amen. Well, friends, as we come to our time of prayer during our worship service, I have many people we'd like you to lift up in prayer. I'd like you to remember the family of Emma Woodstra. This is uh, Randy Province's sister. She passed away on Wednesday. She was 92 years old, so please keep Randy and his family and the Worcester family in your prayers. Janice Madsen is doing much better, um, but she is still in the hospital in Morris. She may get discharged today. Gavin Leach will be having a bronchial scope on Thursday in Peoria, so please keep him in your prayers. Bishop Frank Beard had his second eye surgery uh, this past week and is recovering from that. And I'd also like prayer for a pastor friend of mine. His name is Reverend Howard White. Um, he is the pastor at Carbondale First. A week ago, yesterday, he had a severe stroke. He's, a, he's younger than I am. We are in the same ordination class, but I believe he's a few, younger, few years younger than I am. And so it's really a tragedy for his family um, having to make some very tough decisions um, because he has had brain damage. So just please keep the White family in your prayers. And also my husband Paul um, has a really bad bronchial a cough. He still can taste. He still has his, he doesn't have a temperature, but he got a bad cough, which he often does this time of year. So just pray for him to get over that. He was not at church today. He had, uh, we thank Charlotte for being here last Sunday, and Charlotte is down there in Pontiac this Sunday leading for him. So we uh, keep them in your prayers too. And continue to pray for Dan as he heals, and Cheryl and others that need our healing uh, that you know about. And also Carol, uh, Karen McArdle's uh, granddaughter, uh, Bailey, has a severe case of food poisoning. And uh, her husband and her, they have a baby that's a year old, both had COVID. So their family's really in a mess, and so please keep them in your prayers. Bailey was in the hospital um, with some, getting hydration um, because of this terrible food poisoning. So let's keep all these folks in our prayers and uh, just pray for a safe Halloween and be safe yourselves and, and that people have a good time, but not too good of a time today. <laughs> let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we come in this time to bring these folks that we love to you for comfort and strength. We especially pray for all who are grieving and ask your comfort rest upon them. We uh, pray for the Woodstra family and just pray your great comfort be with them as this time of loss. And also for the Whites, that your great power rest in them in this very, very hard situation. We just thank you for Howard's life and ministry, but we just pray that you will surround that family and strengthen them with all that they need at this very, very difficult time. We pray for Bishop Beard's continued healing for his eyes. We pray for Gavin, that 
This test will reveal what it needs to, and he'll have the healing that he needs. We pray that Janice will continue to get stronger and be able to come home soon. We pray for Paul and others who are dealing with these bronchial issues, that your healing will rest on them. We pray especially for Bailey as she recovers from food poisoning and her husband and child as they deal with COVID, that you'll continue to heal them and give them deliverance. We do pray, O oh Lord, that you help us just to reach out to others in love and grace, that you protect us from evil and challenges, and that you help us, uh, Lord, to rise above the things that cause us to stumble. Help us to keep our eyes focused on you, Lord, and know your love and share your love in new and surprising ways. We thank you that you give us this time to gather as the body of Christ. Help us, O oh Lord, to go forth in peace and truth. We especially ask your blessing on Bruce and Gina as they move eventually to Florida, that that transition will go very well. And please provide for us, too, in our music ministry as we work to be your people in this town and in this community. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name, and we continue praying together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing praise. What will it be like when my pain is gone? Oh, my name. 
prepare to depart, run that race of faith with perseverance, keeping your eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. And know with sure confidence, friends, whatever you're about, as you turn your eyes upon Jesus, you will be victorious in God's time. So trust in the Lord and know that our God loves us and is with us. Amen. 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 Let's sing our closing praise. Thank you all.